and I believe a lot of Christians are, God, make me the man you want me to be. And God said, I gave you the tools, use them. That's how it works. God gives you what you need. You've got to decide to use it. God don't just take you and say, boom, now you're everything I want you to be. It don't work that way. You have to do it. God will give you what you need. God will help you. God will guide you. God will be right there for you. But you have to take the things that he has supplied and use them. We are living as Christians below our means. We are living uh, below, uh, uh, in spiritual terms, we're living below the poverty line when we should be at the top end of the spectrum. Christians should be up here. A lot of time we as Christians are down here. We don't have to be. I've used this many times before, but I think it makes it plain. The Beverly Hillbillies, the Clampers. Jed's got millions in the bank. Look how he dresses. Look what they drive. Look what they eat. They're living below what they have to. We as Christians do that. We're living way below what we have to. I'm going to try to wrap this up. Uh, i got one more place I want to go. Book of John, chapter 10. And somebody said this to me this morning, Lord. Look at John, chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. What is abundant life? Does that mean you got lots of stuff? You got lots of money? You got everything you want? It's spiritual. It's spiritual. Now, there's someone who, who tells me all the time about their abundant life, and you will have an abundance of problems. You will have a, a, an abundance of situations and issues. You will. Jesus said, in this life, you will have tribulation. But he also said you can have an abundant spiritual life. Right. Ask yourself this question. Is my spiritual life a life of abundance? If the answer is no, then ask yourself this question, why? Why is it not? And the answer, it, after what we've talked about already, has to be kind of obvious. It's not a life of spiritual abundance because I haven't taken the things that God has freely given me and used them and applied them and lived in them. That's, not, that's why I'm not living a life of abundance. Hear this again. The thief cometh not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. What is he stealing? What is he killing? What is he destroying? Your spiritual well-being. The souls of people. That's what he's stealing. That's what he's destroying. That's what he's killing. How does he do that? By the things we talked about. When we breathe in that smoke. It affects us. It harms us. It hurts us. We're not uh, healthy, spiritually speaking, because the enemy comes to do that. I'm not saying Satan causes everything in your life uh, that's wrong. He may cause some of it. Situation and circumstance cause some of it. Living in a fallen world cause some of it. But the thing is, he will use it, regardless of where it comes from. He will get in your head and say, see how bad this is? See how bad this is? See how bad this is? And then you start, man, this is bad, man, this is bad. And that's where your mind goes and you forget. God promised that if I seek him, he will take care of me. God promised I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. God promised I am more than a conqueror and that nothing, nothing, nothing can separate me from the love of Christ. 
If I can't be separated from the love of Christ, and He loves me this way, regardless of what is going on, I can live an abundant spiritual life. We have to apply it. We have to decide we're going to do it. We have to make that choice. Uh, when you go out of here, and the next thing that comes up in your face, and your anger wants to get up, or your fear wants to get up, you need to make a decision. You need to make a choice. Are you going to let it, or are you not? How can you stop it? By claiming the promises of God. Whatever this thing is, I just read this morning, whatever this thing is that faces me, if God be for me, who can be against me? He that gave his son willingly for us, he that gave his life willingly for us, how shall he not freely give me everything else that I need? That's how you put a stop to these things. When that rises up, you make that choice. You make that decision. A lot of time, our choice is, I'm going to run with it. You may not uh, consciously form that thought, but that's what we do. We do have to consciously decide, I ain't going there. If you got to say it out loud, devil, you ain't taking me there, then you say it out loud. Right. If, if you've got to drop to your knees on the spot and say, God, give me strength to get through this, then you do that. If you have to go pick up your Bible and read the promises again, then you do that. This is how we overcome these things. This is how we live that abundant spiritual life. This is how we lay claim to those things that God has offered us, that God has given us, that God wants us to have. Back to Peter just briefly, and I'm going to wrap it up. That verse 4 says, Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises. These things that I've been talking about are promises of God. And listen, they are precious the world cannot have them. The world has to uh, go through their life without that uh, one that they can go to, without that tower that they can run into, without that burden bearer that they can cast their burdens on. They've got to go through life without that. But that's precious something that we have. And we need to take advantage of it. And he goes on and he says, By these you might be partakers of the divine nature We've already talked about this, but I want to hit this last part just real quick. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. That corruption, you know what that corruption is? That's what came on us at the fall of Adam and Eve. That's what makes me get angry. That's what makes me get upset. That's what makes me uh, uh, get anxiety. That, that's the corruption that is in this flesh. When God created us, uh, Adam and Eve, that stuff wasn't uh, around. That stuff wasn't in there. At the fall, because now man is corrupted, we have all those things. We have the fear. We have the hate. We have the anger. We have the jealousy. We have all of those things because of the corruption of the flesh. And he said, but through Christ we can escape that corruption. That corruption wants to rise up and control your mind. And control you. You got to put a stop to it through Christ, through the promises of Christ. And I said it, and I said it, and I said it, and I'm going to say it again, and then I'm done. You got to choose to do that. When that thing pops up, I, like I said, when you go out of here today, you try it. The next thing that pops up, you say, No, I ain't going there. And start giving yourself these promises. Start believing these promises. And see if it doesn't make a difference. That's it. I, I trust you get uh, what God wants you to have. You think on it, meditate on it, pray about it. Put it into practice. You know, there's one place where God said, um, try me and see if I will not pour out a blessing that you can't contain. And I believe that applies to everything of God. That if you try what he said, that he'll pour it out. Try it. And see that if it doesn't work. Let's pray.